Hi guys, Olive here, here today with the next installment in my ongoing series of videos all about the 90s PBS kids TV show, Wishbone. If you've never seen an episode of Wishbone, it was a half hour, most of the time, half hour TV show, and it had two different storylines going on in every single episode. In the first storyline, we followed a family living in Texas with their pet, Jack Russell Terrier Wishbone, and it took place in the modern day, meaning the 1990s. And then the other storyline was always an adaptation of some kind of literary work, a work within the literary canon. Now, most frequently, that means a book, but it could also be a play, a short story, a folk tale, just anything within the literary canon. And that storyline always related back to the modern storyline. In this series of videos I do here on my channel, I look at one episode of Wishbone per video, and I compare it against the source material, whatever they're taking on in that specific episode. I look and see whether or not they were faithful to that source material. What did they choose to include? What did they choose to exclude? Why did they make those choices? I looked to see if they pulled any kind of moral message out of the source material to then communicate to the very young audience of Wishbone. And then finally, I talk about whether or not I found the episode to be an entertaining half hour of television. In today's video, I will be looking at an early season one episode that takes on Edmund Rostand's famous play, Cyrano de Bergerac. And that episode is, of course, titled Cyrano's. I wonder if his panache makes it into this episode. Let's take a look and see. What's the story, Wishbone? What's the story, Wishbone? What's this you're dreaming of? At the start of this episode, the next door neighbor to Wishbone's family, the very eccentric Wanda, comes over to the house to show off her latest art piece. She tells Ellen that the piece was inspired by Wishbone himself, which surprises Ellen since Wanda doesn't really like Wishbone in these early episodes because he digs up her yard. But when she unveils that piece, that dislike is apparent because it's a monstrous, unsightly little statue that Wanda insists Ellen keep, even though it's clear Ellen doesn't really want it. Wishbone seems to have an appreciation for it, though. He says there's something about it, a je ne sais quoi, that reminds him of the hero of the play, Cyrano de Bergerac. In the play adaptation, it's 17th century France, and at a gathering, someone makes an easy crack about Cyrano de Bergerac's nose being large. Cyrano, played by Wishbone, hears this, and since he's famously a wordsmith and a poet, he rips into this man using his words, giving a long monologue about what this man could have said about his nose if he wanted to craft an actually intelligent insult. The beautiful Roxanne, with whom Cyrano is secretly in love, is impressed. She asks him to meet her at the pastry shop the next morning, where she reveals she's in love with a man named Christian, much to Cyrano's dismay. She requests that Cyrano look out for the man that she loves, even though she's never met him and has no clue if his brains match his physical beauty. Back in Texas, the kids are suffering through an English class and are not at all enthused when their teacher informs them that their next unit will be on poetry. And he gives them an assignment to write an original poem of any length about anything they feel passionately about. Joe's friend David, who is a well-known science and technology whiz, is not feeling at all confident that he can achieve this. But Wanda, who is still around and still in her creative moment, I guess, encourages is David to express himself. In the play adaptation, Roxanne gets an audience with her love Christian, but although he loves her back, he doesn't have the ability to express himself in the way that she clearly expects out of a lover. She storms off and Cyrano approaches Christian. He obviously needs help. It is apparent to both of them. So while Roxanne is up on her balcony, Cyrano first feeds Christian lines and then takes over the speech making himself, expressing the love that he actually feels for Roxanne and he ends up winning a kiss for Christian rather than himself. The kids in the 90s are also trying to feel inspired. Each of them begins working on their poems when they're at home, and poor David is really struggling with writer's block when his little sister Emily, who is arguably one of the show's best characters, brings in a scroll she found on the front porch that was addressed to David. Written on it is a long poem. 
The next day, the kids are reciting their poems in front of the class. And while Joe and Sam's poems are very nice and in line with what you'd expect from kids their age, David's is astonishing and uses vocabulary no one knew he even understood as such a young man. The teacher is so impressed that he wants to publish David's poem, but David doesn't seem very excited about it. Wonder why. He eventually admits to his friends and to Joe's mom that he didn't write it. He doesn't know who did, but it wasn't him. And he does know that he needs to go and confess to his teacher what he did. And in the play adaptation, another reckoning begins. Cyrano and Christian are called away to war together since they're in the same regiment. And the whole time that they were away, Cyrano was sending letters to Roxanne posing as Christian. She fell deeply in love with the man inside, not just his looks as a result of those letters. And when she goes to be with Christian and tell him this, Christian realizes that she's actually in love with Cyrano, the man behind those letters. Cyrano is about to admit to Roxanne that it was he who authored the letters when Christian is suddenly killed in battle. Cyrano can't tell Roxanne in her moment of heartbreak, her moment of grief, that her love wasn't who she thought him to be. It's only years later that Cyrano finally admits that it was he who wrote the letters. David comes clean too. And the next day in front of the class, he recites a new poem, one that he actually wrote, one that is perfectly respectable and completes the assignment. The teacher applauds his honesty, but he really wants to know who wrote that original poem. And since David doesn't know, they put Wishbone's nose to the test, letting him smell the scroll that David received and then having him sniff out the author. Unsurprisingly, Wishbone heads straight to Wanda's house. So let's talk about this episode. It will probably not be a surprise to anyone to hear that, of course, the plot of the play has been highly condensed in order to fit the time constraints of this episode. They have to do that with most of the literary adaptations, unless what they're taking on is a very short story or a short folk tale. They normally need to simplify things. So in this episode, there's no Degeesh, there's no marriage between Christian and Roxanne, and disappointingly enough, there is absolutely no mention of Cyrano's panache. I know it's a tiny moment right at the end of the play, but I was hoping they would include it. And then there's the fact that it was actually Christian who made that initial dig at Cyrano's nose rather than just some stranger at the party. And then probably the thing that makes the most sense that they changed is the fact that the ending in the play is not as happy as the one they show in this episode. The play is also a lot more violent than this episode implies. It makes sense why they would tone that down. It's a show for children, after all. And I don't think anything was lost by them toning that element down. But I do feel like all the major elements of the play were included in this adaptation. I think you get a good sense of what it is, what it's about. I think you get to know the three main characters. I knew that balcony scene was going to have to be included. It's iconic. I also think it was a good idea that in this adaptation, they didn't mention that in the play, Roxanne and Cyrano are cousins. I know that seems weird to us, but it wouldn't have been weird back then. I know when I try to discuss Mansfield Park by Jane Austen with people, everyone gets caught up on that cousin detail without recognizing that back then it wouldn't have been a strange thing. I think you need to take things within historical context, but I know kids are definitely not going to have the context to understand why that wasn't weird. I think that the plot of the modern storyline matched up rather nicely with the play adaptation. One person taking credit for another person's work, poetry, no less. But I think that the moral message they decided to draw out of Cyrano de Bergerac is one that didn't necessarily exist within the play. I think they tried to extract the theme of honesty out of the play. It's better to be honest. But in Cyrano de Bergerac, I honestly don't believe that Roxanne would have accepted Cyrano earlier on if he had been honest about his feelings right from the get-go. I don't think Roxanne would have accepted him. I think she needed to go through what she went through in order to value someone's heart over their looks. So I don't think that the moral message that Wishbone took out of this play is one that was there in the first place. I will say, though, I don't think David got scolded enough for what he did. 
Claiming someone else's work as your own is plagiarism. And at least when I was in school, that was taken extremely seriously. It wouldn't have been a finger wagging and an instruction to redo the assignment. If that assignment were being graded, he would have failed and his parents probably would have been called. And there probably would have been even more discipline on top of that. And can we also just ask the very obvious question? How did no one in that classroom pick up on the fact that it's very unlikely that a 12 year old wrote that poem. But the core message that I think David's whole situation sends, and it's also a message I think you can get from the play adaptation, is that it is way more trouble than it is worth to claim someone else's work as your own. It is a lot better to just do it yourself. You'll feel a lot better too. This is a surprisingly really funny episode, like from that awful wishbone statue to David's little sister giving him a hard time about maybe having a girlfriend to wishbone's commentary on poetry. I thought it was just so lighthearted and fun. And honestly, I felt that that really matched the spirit of the play. Because for as much heartbreak, violence, and death there is in Cyrano de Bergerac, there's a lot of whimsy as well. And I'm so happy that this episode reflected that. The writing for this episode was also really clever. They, of course, because Wishbone is playing Cyrano, say that he's as ugly as as a dog. Dogs are adorable. Let's be clear about that. But it gave them the opportunity to use that saying. So that was really clever. Also, Wishbone is a dog. So he has a big nose. He has a snout. And so because Cyrano has a big nose, they draw that comparison. And then later on in the episode, Wishbone gets to use that nose to be able to find out that it was Wanda who wrote the poem. I thought it was great. So this was a really good episode. There were a few things that weren't 100% perfect about it. It, but nothing too concerning, nothing that I would draw too much attention to. I just wish plagiarism had been taken a little bit more seriously. But as I said at the start of this video, this is an early season one episode. This was the seventh ever episode of Wishbone, and I've covered all the previous six episodes. So I can tell by this point in the first season, they had really started to find their stride. So those are my thoughts on this episode of Wishbone. I would love to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. And if you would like to see more of these What's the Story Wishbone videos, I will link the playlist that houses all the ones I've done previously and will house all the ones I do in the future in the description box below and up in the cards. And if you would like to keep up with what I'm reading and writing about right now, you can find me on a variety of places around the internet, including Goodreads and Instagram, where I'm the most active. The links to everywhere you can find me will be at the bottom bottom of the description box below. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you're having a wonderful day. I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Funding for Wishbone provided by annual financial support from PBS viewers like you.